How you doing folks? I uh, took a video on this little milling machine I had a while ago and uh, I've been watching videos and I feel that I can probably do this myself. Uh, to ship it out or to even have it done is probably going to cost <laughs> more than I have. Uh, anyhow, what I'm using here is a dial indicator and uh, that's for when you want to get them right get your piece right in there centered in the chuck and uh, you can see I'm just about there if I can trust this indicator I am within you know let's say three and a half thousandths which is really damn close now I could I could probably do what I need to do right there but I want to practice with this thing a little bit because usually well pretty much all the work I do all I have to do is take my cutter and run it up right next to this thing and watch if the cutters touching to it or not and then and then move it around accordingly in the four jaw chuck and if it's a three jaw chuck uh, I'm turning the outside diameter off and the inside so it doesn't matter if it's running off center a little bit because once I'm done turning everything's going to be true. Alright, the lights, okay there we go. Now you will focus, you can see uh, I'm in three thousandths. That's closer than you're going to detect with your eye. I still want to go more. Okay, I see. I am just just a fudge over two thousands, and I think there actually might be a little divot in the surface where my uh, indicator is riding on. But uh, cause it sort of takes a dip and then comes right back. I don't know, but uh, I've been working it and working it and working it and. That's about all the closer I can get it, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to be satisfied with that for now. Right here I'm at zero. Okay, now I got a good view of it. And we have fourteen thousandths run out on the face of this thing. Try to get the right angle here. Kind of tough. But uh I'm like Possibly within a thousandths. I mean this the surface here is a little rough, so it's going to kind of throw the indicator around So it's not ideal, but uh, the work I'm doing Is not affecting where the where the cutting head is going to rest the cutting head rests uh, up against this and or this and I'm not touching either of those what I'm doing I'm cutting back in here in this groove and I'm gonna shave the back of this uh, yeah right there you can see that's chewed up because somebody was really torquing the hell out of this thing and this is cast iron you know you, you shouldn't if uh, <laughs> If you feel the need to torque it that hard, um, instead you should be making lighter cuts or doing something else. You shouldn't have to get a damn six foot breaker bar on there to try and hold your cutter head steady. Okay, I forgot to show the setup, but uh, the way I'm making sure my parting tool is square with the piece, I'll take the carriage and run that down and sort of lay the blade of the parting tool against the face of the chuck and square it off with that. Uh, that might not be the best method, I'm not sure. Um, really, if you want to get into machining, you got a machine, you're not exactly sure what to do, check out uh, a guy named Mr. Pete. Um, he also has another channel, Tubal Kane, and also Keith Fenner. They're those guys really know what the hell they're doing. I could not even begin to call myself an amateur compared to those guys. They're just 
awesome freaking amazing guys and if you want to really learn about machining you should check out their channels because uh, it seems like there's no job that they can't do but uh, anyhow I'm gonna I'm gonna get to turning this at a real low speed and it's cast iron so I got a rag down here to try and catch the chips I get you don't want you don't want those chips laying on on these on the bed of your lathe you know the ways right here these are called because that'll start getting in there and grinding um, <clears throat> what I did to study it I found an old serpentine pulley and I ran my uh, live center the tailstock and live center up against that pulley. I didn't squash the living shit out of it. I just got it a good tension on there. It's hard to explain that, but uh, I'm hoping that that'll that'll keep me in line pretty good. And uh, I'll set it up on a tripod here, hopefully, and get you a good angle so I so you can watch the actual work being done. And we'll start her up. And now I'm sure you can see that run out. See that? You don't want that, but I don't know how to get rid of it, and I don't believe the hold-down bolts for the uh, for the cutter head are going to care about that. So let's just feed her in a little bit. I got this tool hanging out an awful lot. Okay, I dressed up the end of my parting tool. Um, I ran it in a little more so I don't have so much hanging out. So hopefully I won't have so much chatter this time. And we'll plug in the lathe. <laughs> and try again. Nice and easy. this lathe this is this was sold by Montgomery Ward and you can right there was the Montgomery Ward decal but it was actually made by Logan and uh, when we found it it was in the middle of a field underneath a rotted old canvas tarp and the whole damn thing was just had surface rust all over it and uh, it was pretty well locked up there uh, we had to do a lot of work on this to get it to get it freed and working but uh it's come in handy so many times it's more than paid for itself at least a hundred times over I would imagine uh, from just the simple jobs that I've done Uh, going to a machine shop for that stuff would have been a lot of money uh, so this this thing was well worth the investment I can't use it to its full capability 
obviously because I can't even get this damn thing lined up properly but uh it's really done a hell of a lot for me and I'm so glad to have it so uh, I guess we'll stick the mill back together now I don't know it's just awfully gummed up all right this thing is gonna need a good clean or maybe it's that Boy, it was just sliding down on its own before now it doesn't even want to move there it goes I yeah that thing <laughs> that really needs cleaned up there's just crap all over this thing it needs cleaned up but I'll hit it with some carburetor cleaner and uh, oil it up nice okay so now the elevation screw and uh, of course the threads going down into here are boogered up so I'd be real careful starting this thing oh and it's also a reverse thread left hand thread I don't know I just call them reverse threads because that saves me confusion all right I got the cap in place let's see if I can get it oh, that's wrong way. there we go I got her squared up and let's see if I can start a bolt into there oh yeah no problem I'm gonna take some carburetor cleaner and a nice clean rag and uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> boy a scotch pad maybe even some sandpaper some fine emery and go over this tower shaft thing whatever you want to call it because this is really dirty this is not the best place to keep this machine I know but uh this is this is pretty much how it came to me so I can't claim responsibility for for everything I just uh, I just hope that it'll, it'll work with a good degree of accuracy when I'm done here I mean everything feels like it's going together nicely so far okay and that should be Oh, let's unlock that. Okay. There we go. Now we have elevation. Basically, up here in this area, it shined up pretty good. And there's a few blemishes still. I mean, I'm just not going to get rid of them all. But down underneath the block here, uh, it's got some mild pitting. And... Uh, this whole shaft is going to have to come off and I'm going to chuck it up in the lathe and I'll polish it really good and uh, hopefully I can make something out of it. If not, well, it, it still travels and it still seems like it would be accurate but I, I don't like that rust being on there. But uh, anyhow, I got it cleaned up the best I can and I have a thin film of oil on there. So, uh, I think it's about time I started putting the machine itself together. Alright, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm just getting this put together. And, uh, uh, I mean, I can see it. Maybe you can. But, uh, this is, this old surface here was done on a scraper which is pretty much the predecessor of these milling machines so either this table was already made or somebody had a scraper and used it to make this table for this mill that's that's, that's kind of neat all right and we're all together and uh, it seems like it's drawn up there nice and tight uh, you know, if I screwed this thing beyond repair, it's a shame, of course, but, uh, it's not a terrible big deal, because, uh, this thing is just beat all around. It has seen more than its fair share of neglect and abuse. 
Uh, but it does. There's uh, 420 revolutions. Here's 720. And you can hear it's sounding kind of crusty in there. Alright, here's 940. I imagine there's a bearing out or getting ready to go somewhere. That gearbox is going to have to come apart. Alright, and here is 1720, or 40, I mean. It does not sound great. So, uh, imagine this thing could do with some oil. I didn't think all the gears actually worked. Uh, if you mess with them enough, they will they will engage. So, uh, I'm thinking, uh, well, I want to I want to take this motor off on the top of the gearbox and uh, see exactly what's going on down in there. I mean, I hope I hope I can save it because I could I could use it, and I gotta find a cover for this thing to get the uh, air going down past the motor properly. Um, imagine like a, maybe a a one liter soda bottle on there with a with a big old hose clamp or something. I don't I don't know. I'll figure something out. Some kind of bowl. Just something to get some air going down past these fins, keep the motor cool, and uh, as soon as I can get some bolts to hold that table down, I'm going to make a test cut. It looks, you know, it seems like it might work. spindle lock handle is gone or is that the quill I, f I forget I think no I think that's the quill that goes up and down and the spindle spins anyhow this is getting way too long already so uh, and it's gonna take about three years to upload <laughs> and uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a nice day